Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with another fun Stitch It Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tip by Nancy Zeman. First, we'll look at the project we're making today. We're making the Big Bigger Laundry Bag. It's a big tote that expands to two sizes when you bring the tote open. And it's all made from just two fabrics and a little Peltex. We're using Riley Blake's Red Elegance, and we're going to use cotton canvas in gray, and we're going to be using one-sided fusible Peltex, a thick shaper for the bottom of the bag that's fusible on one side. So a big, bigger canvas bag that expands to handle storage and laundry needs. It's a bag or a tote that has both function and style. And sewing this project is easy with just four fabric rectangles. To make the big, bigger laundry bag, we're going to start by cutting some rectangles. We're cutting a 9 by 11 a rectangle of Pelon Peltex, and that's the one-sided fusible, so it has sticky, or glue dots, not sticky. It has glue dots on one side, it's fusible on one side. We need two rectangles that are 22 by 14, cut from that heavy cotton canvas, mm -hmm. and that will make the uh, bottom uh, have shape, and it'll give an accent to the lower tote as well. Okay. We're cutting two. 22 by 36 rectangles for the outside tote. So I have two here. And we're cutting two 22 by 36 rectangles of the cotton canvas. And that'll be for the inner um, canvas tote. It's okay. also reversible. So there's, oh. there's inside, outside. It, it could go either way. You can turn it inside or outside. So we'll also need uh, strips, one and three quarter inch by 30 for the handles. And because we're, we can, this bag has options in the directions in the pattern, we show you how to place handles on the inside halfway down the bag. We need four handles. So we, that means we need four crosswise fabric strips. So two of the Red Elegance and two of the cotton canvas. And we need to turn these into handles. So we'll insert our strip of fabric into the Clover Bias Tape Maker. We'll need a fabric strip. And I've cut it at an angle. And it's one and three quarters inches wide so that it fits right into that two inch bias tape maker. You have to kind of help it in there and I do that using an awl, a stiletto awl. And you just advance the fabric into the one inch bias tape maker and at the pressing uh, ironing board, ironing board and pressing, you'll press this to make one inch straps. You repeat that on the gray canvas as well. In the canvas, I was wondering if the canvas, if the bias tape maker would handle that canvas and it handled it just fine. So we have our two one inch strips, future handles. Then we'll turn them over and I've added some double sided basting tape to the wrong side of one of the straps. That's well, a great tool. It's, it's so handy. It's like putting a million pins into something without pinning. It pins with the, this, the tack of the tape. And we'll just center that Red Elegance fabric on that. And we'll do that all the way down. And then we'll cut 14 inch straps. Okay. And we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll edge stitch each of those straps. Now that we have the straps made, we can talk about the main uh, tote, the main bag fabric. The big, bigger fabric. The big, bigger <laughs> laundry bag. And we'll save this for uh, a step later. Okay. And we'll talk about fabric. One thing that uh, Nancy always taught me, a great classic time-saving tip, is always press and sew and press and sew. Sew and press as you go, and, and even more importantly, uh, just as important is to spray starch and press and steam your fabrics before you begin. We're using two different fabrics here, a cotton mm -hmm. canvas and a cotton quilting fabric. If you, if you pre-wash these separately before you sew them and press them, that's one way to prepare the fabric so that they'll both handle the same in future laundering. Okay. But you can also steam and press at the ironing board twice 
go through it once, steam and press, and it shrinks. You can shrink up to a half an inch per width oh, wow. if, you, if you do it right. Better shrink it now than after you wash it in the laundry. They're going to shrink at different rates. They so you will. might have a big pucker, or you'll have a tiny little bottom. The, in seams, the, could, the seams could pucker, right. So we're going to start by cutting out the lower corners. This is the bottom of the tote. This is the top of the tote. These are the tote accent pieces. So I have four fabrics stacked up here. And you can throw caution to the wind and cut them all at once. That's how or I you, like to do it. <laughs> or you can cut them separately. You could cut it right with a rotary cutter, or you can just mark the corners. But what we need to do is form that gusset mm -hmm. that makes the bottom bag and the side come together into a nice side seam. So it stands up when you're filling it up with all your laundry. Right. It stands right on the, uh, on the laundry room floor. Or uh, if you have it in your fabric, in your sewing room, you can fill it with fabric. On each lower corner, we'll trace a five inch square. And then we'll cut these out with a rotary cutter. Okay. On our next sample, we have to take care of the top. So this sample is turned around. And we need to do some pressing. This is now the top of the tote. Okay. So that we don't have to trade places. Mm -hmm. I've, twist, I've turned the tote instead. And we need to press. We need to press over one half inch. Using an iron at the ironing board, you'll press over that one half inch along the top of the outside tote, along the top of the inside tote. So you'll do that to all four pieces, outer fabric, which I just moved mm -hmm. over there, and then the inner canvas fabric. So for ease in explaining the next step, I've turned the totes again. So these are the top of the totes with both sides pressed under. There's your outer tote with both sides pressed under. And then the next sample shows the bottom corners cut out. We'll bring the Peltex back into the project and just to recap we've pressed under one half inch all the way along all four tops and we have our five inch squares cut out from the bottom. The next step would be to sew the center seam. So we've taken this to the sewing machine and we've stitched that lower seam. This is the seam on the bottom of the bag. It seems really short for such a big bag but it creates the bottom of the bag. And then we'll take that to the ironing board, we'll open the big, bigger canvas bag, and we'll press that seam open. So now that seam is pressed open, but we're not done yet. We need to give that bottom bag some shape. So over big bag goes again, and we're going to add that nine by 11 inch square of the Pellon Peltex. And that, remember, it's fusible on yes. that underside. So when you press at the ironing board with a little steam and a press cloth, that will adhere to the bottom of the inner bag. And it's really gonna stabilize the bottom. It'll stabilize the bottom and it'll help give it that rectangle shape. Mm -hmm. Without this, it wouldn't have a shape to the bottom. It would be more you know, wrinkly or, or saggy. It'd be a saggy bag. It'd be wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> on the next sample, We've switched back to the outside fabric. There's our bottom seam that we sewed, just like the inner fabric. Correct. Now we're going to sew side seams. And the steps are the same for the inner bag and the outer bag. We're going to sew the side seams, mm -hmm. and we'll turn up that pressed, pre-pressed under top edge for sewing that seam, and then we'll press it to one side or press it open and repeat on both sides. And this is a great project for the serger too. Mm -hmm. You can do this all on the serger, which I did for the finished one. So we have our seam, our big long side seam. And then we have our bottom seam. And it's almost like magic by stacking the side seam and the lower seam, it naturally forms this gusset. So when you sew that seam, you'll have a side seam that meets the bottom. And when you have both 
sew into this that mm -hmm. step, then we have to insert one. So we'll once this is sewn, we'll turn this right side out, and we'll insert the lining bag into this. It's oh, a little okay. too big to show you, but mm -hmm. we can bring up the finished big bigger tote. That is a nice big <sighs> tote. We'll have to take a step back here and take a look at it. So I inserted the inner tote mm -hmm. inside. And then because we pressed under that half inch on the outside and the inside, I just met those seams and wonder clipped. Mm -hmm. Wonder clips are wonderful. Clipped all the way around and then I top stitched. Okay. So there's no turning. Some no. bags you have to leave an opening on the inside, sew it, turn it right side out through that opening. There's none of that. Okay. It's all straightforward, straight line sewing. And you, we want our bag to have some handles because you can carry it like a bag or use it like a tote. So we've placed handles at the side seam. So this is the side seam and I placed the handles six inches apart. It's a comfortable grip to be six inches apart. So I've marked my fabric three inches from center and then I've stitched a handle. We start with a 14 inch mm -hmm. handle and this one isn't sewn on yet. Magic. Ta-da. We just unstitched it. So we pressed under a half an inch on each end of the handle and then placed the handle just outside of that three inch marking. Wonder clip, go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch this down and we want this handle to be able to hold up to handling our tote load. So we're going to stitch a square. We'll follow our, st our top mm -hmm. stitching from the handle and stitch a square and then using our laser beam on our baby lock, we're stitching that X in the center of the handle. So it's reinforced and more heavy duty because laundry does get heavy. Right, and it, it makes it look really professional. So in our instructions for the big, bigger laundry tote, let's fold this down halfway to a bushel size. We show you, we could even stand it up. We show in the directions how to add handles on the inside so that you'd have handles here too. Oh, so small. So this is big tote. We open it up. And it's bigger tote. It's a bigger tote. Reverse the big, bigger canvas tote for a completely different look and new style. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Clover, Pellon, and Schmetz Needles.